Welcome back to the Physics Dojo. Today I'm going to show you how you can use a cell phone to measure the density of the air. Okay, so here's a cool thing that you may have not known. Many cell phones are able to read the air pressure. And I don't mean by accessing the internet for a weather report. I'm talking about a built-in pressure sensor that'll let it read the air pressure at the location of the cell phone. These pressure sensors are surprisingly sensitive. Let's take mine for a ride. I'm on the ground floor right now. Let's ride up to the third floor and keep our eye on the pressure values from the cell phone. Here on the ground floor, the pressure is roughly 986.35 hectopascals. But as we're rising, watch how the pressure drops. 986.0, 985.8, uh, continuing to drop. We're just arriving at the third floor. The pressure reaches a low of 985.5. All right, so how are we going to get the density of the air from a pressure sensor on a cell phone? Well, we're going to have to actually add some physics to this, of course. So what we need to know in particular is how pressure varies with depth in a fluid. So just to, because it's maybe a bit more visual, let's start by imagining a swimming pool uh, or really any body of water. As you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the water, the pressure grows. And there's actually an equation that will relate the pressure at a higher point to the pressure at a lower point, depending on some factors, specifically what is the height separating those two points, and what is the nature of this fluid, specifically what is its density. So there is an equation here, and I've written it out already with some kind of labels already put in here, but here it is. The pressure at a lower point, think of it deep down, that's equal to the pressure at a point above that point, so a higher point, and you have to add more. This kind of makes sense. The pressure lower is equal to the pressure higher and some extra amount. And that extra amount depends on three factors. The density of the fluid. Are we talking about water, or are we talking about air, or oil, or whatever? Specifically, the density of the fluid. Uh, we are assuming it's constant, by the way. G. What planet are we on? Are we on the Earth? Or are we on the Moon? Are we on Mars? Uh, the strength of gravity would actually matter because it would add to the weight of that fluid, and it would enhance, if G was greater, the, uh, the pressure difference between those two points. Uh, and of course, H itself. If the two points are very, very close together, then the additional pressure down below will not be much. If the uh, points are separated by a greater, uh, greater distance, of course, that pressure difference will be itself greater. So here's what we're going to do. If we measure the pressure at two points, a higher point and a lower point, and we also measure the height between those two points, how high is point one above point two, then uh, really we have everything we need, we need to know to calculate the density of that fluid because we know that we're on Earth and we know the value for the gravitational field strength is roughly 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So by measuring H, P1, and P2, we'll have all the data that we need to calculate the density of the air. Let's get to it. So here I place my phone directly on the floor for P2, the pressure at the lower level. There's some subjectivity to the reading because uh, the reading does jump around a little bit, but I'm going to read that as 986.9, .9, call it zero, for P2. And here I place the phone directly against my ceiling. So this is P1. Again, I'm going to read that with some, some guesstimating here. 986.53, call it. All right, so now that we have our data all available to us, uh, let's do the calculation. Uh, I've recorded it here. Pressure 1 was 986.53 hectopascals. I'm not sure why it defaults to hectopascals, but hecto means 10 to the power of 2, which means you can just shuffle that decimal over two spots and have the SI unit, which we really need, Pascals. So just delete the decimal and we're, we're good. We're, we're in our preferred units. Same thing for pressure 2, 986.90 hectopascals, or just 986.90 Pascals. And of course, notice that the pressure at point 2 is higher, as expected. Um, I actually measured the height between those two points, and it was almost exactly 3 meters from ceiling to floor. Uh, that's not really rounded off in any dramatic way. It really was very, very close to 3 meters as far as I could measure it. So uh, putting the numbers in gives me uh, basically 986.90 equal to 96, uh, sorry, 986.53 plus rho g, we're assuming is 9.80, kind of a, a common value used for the surface of the earth, times the height of 3. And just kind of doing the math, which I'll just kind of gloss over here, gives me a final answer of 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter. That's my measured value for the density of the air. So is that reasonable? Well, I don't know, let's, um, let's just pull up uh, our trust, trustworthy source here, uh, good old Google, and let's just see what, uh, what its opinion is for the density of the air. 
uh, density of air. Yep, I've looked that up before, so I even remembered it. Uh, of course, this is very complicated because it varies a lot, but you'll notice that uh, kind of just jumping out here at sea level, 15 degrees, uh, the air has a density of approximately 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. 1.225. So comparing that to my value of 1.3, you can see that we're really in the ballpark here. I mean, that, that's a very reasonable measure. And of course, there are variables I, I didn't factor in for uh, comparing my value to Google's value in terms of what is the actual temperature of the air in this room, what is the actual uh, humidity level in this room, because that would also affect uh, the density as compared to dry air. But I think you can see that we're actually we're actually doing pretty darn well. It, it actually works quite well. Uh, so uh, now, of course, just if you wanted to do this yourself, uh, if you want to make it as accurate as possible, I would definitely recommend uh, getting yourself a larger height. I went from floor to ceiling just because it was super convenient for me to do that and measuring height was easy that way. But if you wanted to do this more accurately, you could measure, say, the pressure at the basement or, or the, the first level floor of a building, uh, pressure one at a floor that is a, you know at least a few floors higher up, uh, because, of course, that difference in pressure is going to be greater. So any, uh, any little uncertainties as to those pressure values, you can see even the way those pressure values were jumping around on me, um, the greater those two values are different from each other, those little, little wobbly values, those little uh, uncertainties would have a lesser impact, and, and so you should expect a more accurate value for your funnel density. But there you have it. That's it. We've determined the density of the error in my room using a cell phone.